Our next speaker now is uh, Mukund Magankar, who has been spearheading the uh, tree census and uh, the river walks, the nature walks that we have done at the uh, RFD site at Ban Garden. Uh, Mukund sir is a renewable energy expert and he is also a climate change educator and he is a forest restoration enthusiast. Uh, without any further ado, Mukund sir, over to you for your presentation. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, all of you must have realized how fraudulent and how wrong this riverfront development project is. I'll try to say what I have to say within the next five or 10 minutes, though my presentation was going to be longer, but I'm sure dinner is waiting for all of you. So let me make a try to make it in five minutes. The Riverfront Development Project is going to span 44 kilometers. 10.8 kilometers of Mutha, 18 kilometers of Mula, and 10 kilometers of Mula Mutha. These have been broken into stretches, starting from stretch one here from Chinchwad to stretch five and Sangam, which is the confluence. Ani Itna Varja Pasna Sangam Paranta. 18 stretches, pa, uh, Saha, Saat, and Art. Paths Mula Varti, Saha, Saat, Art, Mutha Varti, and now Daha Akra, 9, 10, 11 on Mula Mutha. And it is laughing, I feel like laughing that we started, this is the outflow, and we started restricting the river banks from the outflow. So I'm not sure what. What is going to happen in the monsoon this year if we're going to reduce? However, when you look at the stretch number nine, there is a very historic island, and it is a heritage island which is called Nikebet. And I'm going to talk for two minutes on that island. When I came to Pune in 1975, I was told Pune Tethe Kai Une. Today, I feel like saying Pune Tethe Une Tsune. I'm going to tell you a story in a very short time of a degraded heritage wonderland. This is the Nike Bait as shown in Google Maps. Mula Mutha River divided itself into two streams, one going along the right bank and one going along the left bank. And this Nike Island, actually it was, there were two islands, one small island and a small rivulet in between and the large island. I had the fortune of visiting this island some 42 years ago. And I tell you, it was an amazing experience when I was in college to spend a full day on this beautiful island that was our heritage. We talk of our cultural heritage, we talk of our educational heritage, we talk of our intellectual heritage, but we never talk of our natural or ecological heritage. It is an irony that in spite of the fight put up by Sarang and Vandana, this stretch of water is being filled with this thing and even Google has crossed over this Mula Mutha River. So this island is soon going to be part of land. When I visited there, there was a person called Ganpatrao Naik who owned this island.
Mm, I think uh, we've lost connection with Mukund sir right now. Uh, his uh, Mukund sir, uh, we sorry, just, uh, we lost connection with you for a bit over there. Uh, I'm going okay. to stop your video so that we can continue hearing you and seeing the presentation. You can go ahead. We can hear you now. Okay. Uh, so these are the two islands that I remember, and Ganpat Rao Naik was here, a white-haired man of 65. Uh, he looked after all the trees, and he had planted a lot of coconut trees, and he was proud to tell us, youngsters, adolescent youngsters, that his coconut trees had the maximum yield of in the whole world. His trees bore 1400 to 1500 coconuts per year and the best in Malaysia was 1200. He used to talk to each tree, ask them what is going on. All these trees and there were five or 10 cows that he had uh, raised on this island and he would only use a uh, natural manure from made compost made from cow dung and the uh, leaves that fell down. That heritage we are going to lose. I'm going to throw some images out. They speak for themselves. This is the Nike bait from the right bank. This is the channel that existed in between. This is the Nike uh, bait from the left bank. And this is the Nike bait today. When I visited just 15 or 20 days ago for the first time, after 42 years, when I visited first time in 1973, we had to use a torchlight to move around. The foliage was so dense. Uh, the sunlight was not reaching ground. There are many more trees. Today, all these trees are numbered. That means they are going to be chopped. For the last 20 years, nobody has looked at it. Nobody has taken care of the trees and they're rotting away. Huh. The DP shows these are the, what you see in red are the bridges shown in the DP. That means they're going to build two bridges, one here and one here, destroying the Nike bait completely. And we cannot let that happen. Uh, Satya talked about the riparian zone. What the riparian zone does is it protects water erosion. It has amphibian plants. It has larger trees. It absorbs a lot of water. It provides habitat to many insects, birds, and uh, small mammals. It protects land from water erosion. And you would see that typically the river should have at least twice the width as the riparian zone. Unfortunately, what is going to happen is here. This is from the Ban Garden Bridge to Sadal Baba Darga. They have made a model stretch of 300 meters. This patch had 95 riparian trees. These have gone. We have encroached into the river by 50 meters, as Sarang was saying, 150 feet. What would happen if we, and these trees, these 95 trees are numbered, but when we went on ground, we could not find a single one of them. So who should go to jail? I think the municipal corporator, sorry, the municipal commissioner should go to jail for having done this without permission. A similar thing is going to happen on the other bank. See the width of the river 
as how much it will be reduced. You can see a rich riparian woodland here that is also going to go just to build the lower promenade, the upper promenade, and the continuous public realm. It is just ridiculous. We cannot let it happen. Sarang talked about effect of climate change. I'm also going to talk about climate change and the effect of this project. It's always a two-way process. Effect of a project on climate change and effect of climate change on the project. So Sarang talked about effect of climate change on the project and talking about effect of project on climate change. This project has 2.2 million square meters of construction, which will mean 2 million tons of additional emissions, which is 8% of Pune's annual emissions. Just to absorb this, we would require 8.7 crore trees, 87 million trees, just doing this. Why are we doing this? Why are Pune's liver polluted? The main reason is the sewage outflow, only 30% I'll quickly run through my presentation. In 2015, it said that Pune is going to be a smart city. So management achieving river ecosystem transformation. The only transformation we saw was that the biodiversity of fish reduced from 60 in 1960 to one today. Smart city project also said that 100% sewage will be treated. Nothing happened. We said we are committed to make Pune city a clean and healthy city. Nothing happened. This is what you see in Pune rivers methane bubbling up to the bottom of rotting matter. Sarang has covered all these numbers, so I will not cover them again. This is what's supposed to have happened in Jaika. What you see here is the existing STPs in green. Red are the new species in Jaika, and the red and uh, uh, green are the ones where the capacity enhancement should have taken place. I added all these together, and all these figures are from PMC's website. I added all these together, and the grand total, we, we treat only 428 MLD of sewage. JICA was to add another 408. That would have meant 856. Sarang has shown you a calculation that we require a capacity of 1634. So we have a shortfall of 770, almost 800 MLD shortfall after completing JICA, which is 400. So if you put these two together, the capacity that Pune City should have is 1200 MLD extra. And that should be our priority and nothing has been done on this. In the RFD, you will see in the left corner here, this purple, they have shown two plants, proposed STPs under riverfront development, each having 30 MLD capacity. So I don't know what, whether to laugh or whether to cry. Radawa ke hasawa. Okay, so let me come to the last part and important part. Uh, what should we do? Make all efforts to force PMC to scrap RFD. This is going to damage Pune irreversibly. This is going to damage the riverine biodiversity irreversibly. This project is going to be killing 
our rivers. So we must put a halt to it immediately. Let's come on the road. We must demand 100% sewage should be treated before releasing into a river. The 11 new SCPs to be built, optionation and as soon as possible, in some of all the STPs, river cross section should not be altered. No trees should be cut. And if any tree is cut, let us put people behind, like the commissioner behind bar. Establish Nike Bait as the biodiversity heritage park. And it is unfortunate that we have such lush green places in Pune. So let us, re we would like to have river rejuvenation, but it should be ecologically prudent, sustainable. It should have the least carbon footprint and local expertise to be used to ensure that we don't keep pouring. So join our movement of telling people around you that I have fasted today. It is a good way of telling the officials that you have fasted for the river. Join nature walks. I, I, I was so amazed when I walked on the right bank from uh, the uh, Yaroda Bridge up to Boat Club. It was such a wonderful talk. It's such a wonderful walk. It was like walking into an arboretum. It was a nice current forest on the right bank. And that is going to be completely wiped out. Arrange for presentations. And I would also like to put at the end our social media ha handles. And I would like to say that using the Impact Guru link, please contribute whatever you can. I would also like to emphasize, come and share your protest with us on the road and bring the authorities to stop this project completely. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mukun, sir.